نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ربی یسر ولا تعصر و تمم بالخیر اللہم ارن الحق حقا و رزقن اتباعه و ارن الباطل باطلا و رزقن اجتنابا آمین یا رب العالمین الحمدللہ with the mercy and blessing of Allah سبحانہ وتعالی Today we are going to see some precepts regarding the call of nature. <coughs> and this is Adabul Khala. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us inshallah that we be able to be of those who love to stay clean and who love to purify themselves. So as we go along through this journey through the book of cleanliness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us very clean inside and out. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. So if you are ready to learn the Adab al-Khala and you have the first hadith open in front of you, inshallah, then let's uh, get started. And we see that an Anis radiallahu anhu qala, kana rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, iza dakhal al-Khala'a, yuqulu, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-Khubti wal-Khaba'if. Anas radiallahu anhu, he relates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before entering the lavatory, before entering the bathroom, he would recite, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I seek refuge in you from the unclean jinns and the she jinns, which are all the evil uh, jinns out there. Okay, and this is such a beautiful dua that reminds us that where are we going? Which place are we going? This is supposed to be a place where we go, need to go in, get done, and get out. So how many of us have memorized this dua? Uh, let's type five, and who can repeat it one more time? Then please unmute, and let's see if you can say it. Yes, Sister Sabita, inshallah. You want me to chant the dua? Yes, if you can say it. Yeah, okay. Time. Yeah. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubusi wal-khabais. Alhamdulillah. So many a times, you know, like uh, we know this dua, but let's bring it to consciousness that we have to say it when we are entering the bathroom and of course enter with the left foot, inshallah, so that we take refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all the evil and the evil doers. So next time we are going for, uh, you know, the for relieving ourselves. So you see the word, this is al-khala, which is like uh, something where you go and you empty yourself out. Be mindful that you're not going into a restroom. This is a place which has, you know, uh, dirt filth in there, no matter if you live in places where they're kept very clean, alhamdulillah. But still, this is not a place where we want to stay for long. So we have to do our business and then come out. You know, we see like many a times people have a lot of setup over there. So you have magazines and things and uh, whatnot. And even you might have seen some people have like even um, radios going on there, fog showers. You can even share what you have observed. But in a house, the most expensive areas which the investment is done typically is like the kitchen and the bathrooms. Although these are the two places where we need to be um, just as need basis but subhanallah you know how shaitan tricks us he makes us spend most of our time <clears throat> in these two areas uh, either we are uh, buying the food preparing it making menus uh, cooking feeding and then the after effects so <laughs> subhanallah it's really really important to live a conscious mindful life that how much time we have and uh, when we enter we enter with our left foot and say allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-kubdi wal khaba'is now, an Aisha radiallahu anha, uh, uh, anna, she narrates, uh, she narrates from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she says that, anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kana idha kharaja min al-gha'iti, qala gufranak. Just one simple word, gufranak. And what does that mean? Aisha radiallahu anha, she transmits that when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came out of the lavatory. Now you can see the word here, al -ghaid. That's another name for the, um, uh, for uh, Bayt al You can, uh, that is the lavatory. She, he recited, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask for your forgiveness. 
Now, what, why there is a need for forgiveness? Why are we asking forgiveness at this time? You know, like these are the moments when you're not, you know, uh, you're not going to do zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not going to recite or you're not going to uh, make dua at this time in, inside the bathroom. They're supposed to be, you're supposed to go and get done and come out. Uh, obviously, the angels also, like, you know, your uh, kiram and katween also, that's why you don't want to really talk over there. So even in the such, some moments, you know, that you have spent without uh, members of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at the mindfulness that you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah forgive us for even those moments um, uh, you know forgive us for anything which is not done right or anything uh, you know uh, that is done so one should exit with the right foot so I hope we can do that and it's a great idea sometimes you know we are in a rush and we kind of forget uh, so we can always make reminders to put around in our houses uh, in the places uh, like if you are like in an institute, then we can put the signs there. Sometimes you are in a place where the languages are different. Uh, the different people speak different languages. I can put uh, the reminders in that language as well so to remind. Even if it's three, you can put up some signs for them so that they can remember and uh, you know, have a more mindful entry and exit. So you can see that even, you know, the uh, the even when we are using the bathroom, that action can be turned into ibadah if you are done in the right way because you are doing it in a full conscious way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, enable us that we follow the etiquettes, uh, you know, in the right way. And uh, we make sure that we understand what position that this place has and how much, you know, consciously let's start rethinking our way how we access these areas so again these are not restrooms these are supposed to be done quick in and out and no uh, lounging in there and no more spending too much time in there and uh, making sure that you seek refuge from the evil jinns uh, and relieve yourself quickly and we get done now we see that nothing containing the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be taken inside the lavatory, right? Like some people say, oh, okay, we have we have forward, like those shower radios and things. Can we play Quran in there or we do that? So it's really important that we educate ourselves and, and start living a mindful life. That An Anis ibn Malik radiallahu anhu qala, kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, idha dafal al-qala'a wada'a khatamahu. And this is uh, narrated, this is recorded in Tirmidhi when Isai Ibn Majah, Anis Ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he relates Rasulullah when he wanted to enter the lavatory, he used to remove his ring from um, on which was inscribed Muhammad, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it's really, really uh, interesting and important that we are not going to take anything with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in there. I think so many a times people, uh, you know, out of love or out of, uh, you know, what they do is they have lockets which have a name of Allah in there and they're wearing those necklaces or there are some rings or there are some things that they, maybe sometimes, you know, you even see that there are some clothing which is coming with these kind of words in there. So we should be very mindful as to uh, why we are doing what we are doing. And at the same time, if you're going into the restroom, then make sure that you remove it. So even those bracelets that people are making, and those with the name chains it's like you know like how uh, the nasara they have this uh, cross sign they are wearing and kind of emulating that so it's really important to read into the fine lines and the details and see where do we want to align ourselves as far as the ring of the prophet was concerned it was basically there as a stamp for uh, the letters which had to be done and you can see like it had the name of Allah subhanahu ta'ala on it and Rasulullah sallam uh, name there so and even that you know it was a need just like today if you want to send a package you need to put a stamp on it otherwise it won't go so Rasulullah sallam would remove that if he had a need to relieve. Now another thing which is important is facing or doing back to the Qibla. So one should not face the Qibla or turn his back towards it when answering the call of nature in the open. However, it is permissible inside the lavatory or behind a wall. So an Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the jalasa ahadukum ala hajatihi falla yastakbilanna al-qiblata wa la yastadbirha. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he narrates from the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, when a person sits to answer the call of nature, he should not face or turn his back towards Qibla. This is, trans this is transmitted in Muslim. 
Now, you know, we see um, in other uh, hadith in which we see that Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhumah relates, when I climbed to the roof of my sister Hafsa, Hafsa's house radiallahu anha, uh, I saw Rasulullah sitting behind the wall to answer the call of nature and his face was towards Syria and his back towards Qibla. And this is translated by Muslim. So apparently you see and you feel that, oh, here is a contradiction, you know, like here is a contradiction that, you know, here he is standing there and we see that he is doing that, although it was told not to do that. So we really need to understand and make dua for ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only give us ilm, but give us hikmah to understand how things are. There should be no extremism when it comes to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you are making a new house, let's say a new house is being built or this, you know, you're making a setting or designing um, where, how the uh, fixtures are going to go, then make sure that you remember that do not face, uh, you know, uh, the Qibla or turn the back towards it and uh, be careful and conscious of that. But let's say sometimes you are in a situation where they are built like that or you're not aware of how they are oriented and you are in a situation, you're in an office building or you are somewhere else and you don't realize it, then you can, you know, move, like you position yourself a little bit slightly uh, out of, you know, um, uh, as you say, right? So you fear Allah to the best of your knowledge. Some people become so extremist in that and they say, oh, you know what, how come your bed is like this? It's facing the Qibla and things like that. So when you read that is, yes, it is, you know, uh, it is not like haram as such, but definitely it is makru and we should be uh, careful out of respect. And the more you will love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we will orient ourselves accordingly. So again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us align ourselves in the right way that even when we are setting the foundations, let's say an institution is being built or a masjid is being set up or, you know, areas your home is, is uh, you know, custom made, uh, then definitely make sure that we are, they, they are positioned in a way that somebody is not forced to face the Qibla or do the back to the Qibla. And uh, when answering the call of nature, it is forbidden to touch the private parts with the right hand. Okay, and it is forbidden to wash the private parts <clears throat> with the right hands. And Abi Qatada radiallahu anhu qala, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la yumsikanna ahadukum zakaruhu bi yaminihim, wa huwa yabulu, wa la yatamassah min al-qala'i bi yamini, wa la yatanafas fil ina. Abu Qatada radiallahu anhu, he, does, he transmits from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that when passing urine, no one should touch the private parts with right hand, nor wash it with the right hand, nor exhale in the vessel when drinking anything. SubhanAllah. This is so beautiful that, you know, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us uh, all the details that we need, even how to relieve ourselves properly. How many of us feel in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Go ahead and type one that, yes, alhamdulillah, inshallah, we now know if Allah has given us two hands, which hand to use for what purpose, right? Alhamdulillah. So, inshallah, going forward, no using our uh, right hand for cleaning ourselves. And same thing applies for mothers when you are changing diapers or you are, you know, helping your little ones clean up or let's say somebody is attending to an elderly, then same thing will apply. Same thing will apply. It's very interesting. One of my neighbors, she was telling me that now they have even a technology. I don't remember the name exactly, but they have something for which people are coming in fitness gyms in which they remove, like they, they rem like they clean their your bowel and the abdomen area. Um, by putting some pipe in and it's kind of you know helps you clean out and your abdomen feels nice and clean so i was like wow subhanallah like you know what the world is getting to and it's the same thing applies if somebody is like uh, in a nursing profession and they are taking care of somebody elderly and taking care of that same thing be careful uh, that only use your left hand for helping somebody clean even if it's a child or even if it's your own self and wudu should be commenced from the right side as well all right, so it's um, it, we we get this from an Aisha radiallahu anha. She said that Rasulullah sallam uh, preferred to start wudu with the right side. Similarly, when combing his hair or wearing shoes. All right, so uh, the right side is like the yameen on our right side. I hope we can all wave our right hand right now and uh, feel it that this is where we will need to start even when we are doing the wudu or if we are combing our hair, you can touch your head right now, feel your thing and 
think like realign yourself we used to make our hair right but now inshallah we are going to be more conscious and even when putting our shoes on that's what we are going to use now it is forbidden to answer call of nature in the middle of the pathway or under a shade subhanallah it's very interesting right so um and Abi Huraira radiallahu anha he narrates Rasulullah sallam said ittaqul la'inain fear uh, Allah uh, like fear um, uh, uh, people safeguard yourself from two uh, crude matters and the companions asked Ya Rasulullah sallallahu sallam uh, wa man la'inan what are these two like what are these two matters on which we are they are cursed, right? And he said, do not answer call of nature on the pathway or under a shady tree. SubhanAllah, right? So um, do not, let me just have this here, that do not answer uh, call of nature. And that is where? On the pathway. And this is something which is very, very important uh, even in uh, on, under a shady tree you know one of my uh, next door neighbor you know one time I was standing with him he was so upset like you know people are having their they walk their dogs and they do not pick up after them so he um, and I was so surprised I was like wow subhanallah like you know this is causing so much pain to him and he's uh, although they have their like he, he he didn't have a pet at that time and he was like you know like they come down on their garden and they let their dogs relieve themselves and then they just leave so you might have seen uh, those who are living in uh, in the western countries they might have seen uh, at different places you know we have um uh, the pickup um, pick up um, bags are available but even then some people they do not have the courtesy of doing that they, even the animal in themselves like they have that instinct that they will dug a little bit or they will push some things behind it to cover it up but uh, this is very important that we need to teach ourselves that we do not answer a call of nature on the pathway like you know some it was a place where people are going by and people really it's, it's so sad and sickening when we go to uh, some of the developing countries and it's still some of the places where you cross by it's so filthy and dirty uh, why because people are just not conscious and they will just you know sit down wherever they want to and they would just relieve themselves so if we can remember these two words from another hadith of the prophet let la darar wa la darar can somebody say that la darar wa la darar like do not like do not harm somebody or do not be harmed so it's very very important like whenever we are anywhere any place uh, let's say we are in a mall so some places you know we even see that sometimes there are some mothers who would relieve their kids in the sinks um, they will be using the sink for a child to be relieved and things like that so that is something uh, Rasulullah is reminding us that ittaqul la'inain you know fear safeguard yourself from these two matters so even if we have pets or we have kids or for our own self be very very careful that let's not create this uh, filth in the places where people are going to uh, use and they're going to cross by and they're going to uh, access those areas it's not the right thing sometimes you know we go inside a restroom a washroom area and we think oh it's just a public property and i'm just going to leave from here so nobody like i don't need i need, don't need to be i can do whatever I, I do and then i can just leave right away so the sanitary napkins and things are just left here and there and they are not properly disposed of and it's really, really sad. Sometimes people like, you know, use a lot of napkins and they will uh, put them into the uh, the toilet mode and that will just clog up and it will be so hard. We even even in the Islamic school that, that I work with, they, we had to like call people to uh, have that whole thing extracted. And so many things were inside the uh, inside the commode area. So it's very, very important that we educate ourselves, then we educate our children that it's important it's an imana anything anywhere that we are we are in in the visibility of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so next time we are just dumping something down just be very careful that who is watching right anybody wants to share anything again uh, you can most welcome to share or just type five that you agree that inshallah we are going to be very very mindful discuss with our families tonight that we will stop uh, we will be very careful relieving ourselves in um 
in uh, wherever we are and then especially under shady trees because these shady trees you, you know like if, if it's like really really hot then you do realize the significance of that and sometimes you would have seen it i'm sure how many of us by the way have stories when it started raining very heavily and you had to find yourself cover yourself under a tree and you were like alhamdulillah <laughs> this tree is there right go ahead and type one that yes alhamdulillah we have been to that situations where you know we have rested next to a tree and we have really enjoyed being under a tree right alhamdulillah rabbil alameen so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to live with that that uh, attitude that la darar wa la darar right and uh, now we are going to see that um, we are going to see um, another one which is about that it's important to clean yourself after the call of nature okay it's very very important to clean yourself and uh, after answering call of nature to attain purity at least three clouds of clay or water should be used and dung or bone should not be used to attain purity uh, after answering call of nature so let's see this this radiallahu anhu qala qana rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yadkhulu alqala'a fa ahmilu ana wa ghulam nahwi idawatan min ma'i wa azatan fa yastanji bil ma' mutafaqqan alayhi so anas radiallahu anhu he relates when rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam proceeded to answer call of nature myself and another body of my age would carry a utensil of water and a spear and accompany him rasulullah would wash the private parts with water now there is so much to learn from just this one hadith subhanallah like it's so amazing like if you just focus on the name anas radiallahu anhu you have heard his name so many times in today's sitting right so who was anas radiallahu anhu yeah, like he was one of a young boy that his mom had assigned to take you know, like you know in in the like in the supervision of the prophet like let him be there for his khidma and let him be there so that that, that can be done he was even like he had the title of being the khadim ikhas so when somebody is like you know a ghulam or a khadim ikhas then they get to learn a lot of things you see so many of our such ahadith is coming from him why because he was very close and he had the honor of you know helping um, rasul in these moments subhanallah so if somebody is really old and they um, or they are in a situation because of health wise they can keep um, somebody for help you know I can so relate to it like yesterday when I woke up I was completely stuck like my neck I just woke up I just like normally went to sleep you wake up and it was just normal and then all, I just lifted up and then a severe pain and I just fell on the other side and at that time I realized something has gone wrong everything was just so stiff and then subhanallah to cut short my husband had to bring even water for me to do wudu at the um at the at my bed and i just had to do wudu and very like difficultly i was able to at least you know i wanted to pray so subhanallah alhamdulillah everything relieved now but you know looking here it's so beautiful that if somebody needs somebody you see a another body of my age would carry a utensil of water and a spear now you might be thinking why this spear so the spear can be taken at that time. They were the bathrooms were not like there was not like a tash bathroom. It was not like you stand up and you get inside the bathroom and it's just right there. So sometimes you have to walk distances. Even in today's time, you will see a lot of people have such kind of situation where they have like these lavatories outside because again, so they are supposed to be areas where uh, not the good jinns are going to stay. So they were kept separately. Now we have in the in modernism we have brought them next to our homes and then we access them so many times. You would have remembered when you used to go to college or universities you would go in the morning and come back home in the evening and you would go once or twice in the whole day but now since we eat too much we need to relieve ourselves too much so here the spear was used sometimes to dig to soften the earth because when you are relieving yourself it doesn't like you know sprinkle back on you or sometimes you want to dig it back and cover it it, it would also be like you know sometimes you're going far and there could be some things on the way today it's so amazing like even when our kids go for scouting uh, these similar things are needed, you know, when they go and camping and they are outside. Um, it's interesting that that spear can be used for self-defense. And sometimes, you know, when you are in such a uh, places, like sometimes you have gone for hiking and some place you have to leave yourself, that can be used for putting up like a, you know, like a cover, like you have like a chadar or a cover, a blanket, and you just stretch it, spread it. And sometimes the kids, you know, uh, dirty themselves and they have to do a change of clothes or something. So it can be an, uh, a temporary separation. Can 
can be uh, erected with those spears. So subhanAllah, that was there. And uh, Rasulullah would wash the private parts with water. So that is something in interesting that we need to use water to clean ourselves. Today, you see, like we live in a culture which is, this is unheard of. Like, you know, people do not even know about this. And so much education needs to happen. Like, what is this? What is this? thing in our bathrooms you know many people don't even know that that's why even that uh, water device that people have installed some of us you know who wants to, who wanted to make it easy they call it like muslim shower right how many of us have heard about muslim shower go ahead and type five that yes we have heard it or we have it in our homes so yes use water and now uh, you know the bidet concept is also coming in in uh, chinese culture and they have that built in into the seats as well in some areas it is available right now, Salman Farsi, radiallahu anhu, he was asked, uh, we are going to do this one as a last for today, uh, that Salman Farsi, radiallahu anhu, was asked uh, sarcastically, right, with a very, um, uh, in a sarcasm way, like, your prophet has instructed you about all matters, even about ur urination, subhanallah, qala kila lahu kad allamakum nabijukum kulla shay'in hatta al-khira'a, so, and even the passing of his expression, Salman stated, Yes, Rasulullah has forbidden us from facing the Qibla when answering call of nature, from using right hand when passing urine, from using less than three clods of clay for cleaning the private part, and further from using the dung or bone for cleaning after urination. So Alhamdulillah, um, this is so beautiful that uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants us to be very, very confident people. So next time somebody makes fun of you, right? Um, you can always explain to them why there is a reason for everything, and you can you can always explain why why this is happening, why this is so, and uh, we can all. Uh, you know, whenever we are learning something, let's remind ourselves that knowledge demands action and I can change for good. If there was something I was not doing right, I can <clears throat> start from today and start fixing it. Inshallah, now I will enter the bathroom with a dua. Now I will enter, um, you know, with my right uh, foot first and uh, uh and then I will, you know, I will, uh, sorry, enter with the left foot first. And now when I leave, I will uh, leave with the dua. I will leave with my right foot first, right? And inshallah, now I'm not going to stay too much long over there. I'm going to relieve myself. I'm going to sit in a proper direction, proper way, and uh, help myself to be clean. Alhamdulillah. And if somebody, you know, makes fun of us in, in that way, then it's it's a huge mercy of Allah SWT that Allah SWT has not left, left us in, um, you know, in dark. And he has even given us guidelines for this very important human need that we all go through. So Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, knowledge demand actions. Allah SWT help us stay clean. Allahumma ja'alna min al-tawwabina wa ja'alna min al so do ask yourself, what did I learn today? And uh, learn it, live it, and share it for the maximum benefit. So jazakumullah khair wa asana jaza. Subhana rabbika rabbil aizzati yamma yasifun. Wa salamun alal mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Unless you have any question, we will stop here, inshallah. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Or any comment, if anybody has, most welcome, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, Mr. Javeria. Wa alaikum, assalam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, Javeria, I have a question. Um, I, of course, when you go to the bathroom and you clean yourself, it has to be with the left hand. But what if for some reason your left hand, you got hurt or like something happened, then what do you do? Yes, that's a beautiful question, Sister Nisa. And that's where we need to be most aware of Allah's mercy. That Allah knows if you are doing it, like there is a word in the Quran, wala adin, wala baga. Like this person is not adi, like this is not his adat, and this person is not transgressing, like he's not doing bagawat, right? So, so that is something so beautiful that Allah knows what condition it is. Like I am honestly telling, yesterday the condition I was in, I could not even stand up, I could not even lift my head. And Allah knows at that time that yes, you cannot do the proper wudu. I cannot even like do tasleem with my head. Like I, I yesterday I did tasleem, uh, saying salam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, just with a straight head, and that's it. And that mm -hmm. was salam alaikum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. That's it. 
So Allah knows when somebody is in a situation, then Allah knows, right? So Alhamdulillah, there is no extremity in that. Yes, there are situations somebody's head can, hand can be amputated as well. In that case, Allah SWT is the most forgiving and He knows, uh, you know, and He is the most forgiving. Alhamdulillah. Wa <laughs> alaikum